What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another weekly live stream from Scalar Learning. I am Huzefa, and we are continuing the trend with SAT problems straight from Khan Academy's website. And today we are, let me do a quick sound check here and make sure we're up and SAT. running. Yep, we are good to go. So today we are moving on with, uh, let's see, level two problems in center spread and shape of distribution. So as always, I'm doing these problems for the first time, which is part of the fun. And if you like what you see, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe to come back every week and get more SAT problems if you're preparing for an upcoming SAT. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this one. So it says time in minutes number of runners. It says the time in minutes rounded to the nearest minute that took runners that runners took to finish a three mile race is shown in the table to the left. If the mean finish time was 21 minutes, what is the value of R? So in order to get mean, what you do is you add up all the values, right? And you divide by the total number of runners. Uh, so let's see if we can figure this out here. Um, if it's 21 minutes, so let's see how many runners there are. Now we don't know how many runners there are, right? But we can estimate. So the formula would be, well, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15. So number of runners is actually 15 plus R. We don't know what R is. And <clears throat> I'm setting up kind of like a standard mean calculation thing. So basically where we take the total amount of time divided by the number of people equals 21. All right, so now we got to add all this up, and this is a no calculator. So let me kind of do it over here. We've got 18, one person ran 18, two people ran 19, so that's 38. Three people ran 20, that's 60. Six people ran 21, so that's 126. Uh, then we have 22R, because we don't know what R is, so it's R times 22. And then one person ran 23, two people ran 24, so that's 48. So I don't think there's a faster way to do this. I'm, I'm trying to think as I'm doing this, this is going to take a little bit long, but I think this is the best way. 8, 16, 22, 25, 33. Carry the 3. 4, 7, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21. Carry the 2 and 3. So it's 313 plus 22R. Okay, and now we just got to solve for R. Let's get rid of all this. Multiply both sides by 15 plus r. So 313 plus 22 r equals, there's a lot of multiplication in this, uh, 15 times 21 is 5, 1, 0, 10, 2, 3, 315. So then on this side, the 15 multiplies the 21, we get 315 plus the r then multiplies 21 plus 21 r. And then we can subtract both sides by 313. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And then we get 22R equals 2 plus 21R. Subtract by 21R. Oops. And we get R equals 2. So R should be 2. And I think that works. Yay. All right. Percentage of on-time flights, let's see. The percentage of on-time flights for each of the 50 largest airlines in the world is plotted to the left to the nearest 5%. Okay, 55%, 60%, okay, okay. Uh, right, so there's like a lot that are 85%. <clears throat> uh, okay. Let me just make sure I get this right, the percentage of on-time flights. So for those guys, so there's that many that are 85. Okay. According to the dot plot, which of the following is true? There are an equal number of points to the left of 72.5 as to the right of 72.5. Um, so the median is 72.5. Well, that would be true. Let me just count it up. But that doesn't sound right. Because look, there's way fewer over here. Here's like 72.5, right? There's way fewer here than there are here. So I'm going to say, A, you're out. Let me do this here. A is gone. 
They're an equal number of points to the left of 72.5 is to the right of 72.5. So the mean is 72, but that's just not true. Again, there's not an equal number, so I'm going to cross that off unless I'm misunderstanding something. There is a smaller concentration of points to the left of the dot plot, so the median of on-time percentage is less than the mean. This is true because the median, the mean is going to be skewed up based on this higher concentration over here. The median is going to be somewhere in the middle. Like I don't, we don't need to calculate it, but let's say it's like the median would be around here or something, and the mean would probably be up here. Um, so the mean is less than the median. No, I'm I'm going with C. Let's see if this is right. Oh no, did I get that wrong? The mean is less than the median. The mean should be, oh, maybe I did that backwards. I'm sorry. I thought the mean would be skewed up, but the median must be skewed up harder. So let's see if we have the median. Yeah, maybe the median would be up here. Mm. Okay, I'd have to do the calculation. My thinking must not have, must, must have been backwards there. So I guess in that case, the skew would affect the median more so than the mean. All right, my bad. Again, the median is actually just the middle of the data, the exact middle point. The mean is when you take all the values, you add them up, and you divide by the total number of values. All right. Number three, heights of NBA players in inches. The dot plot above depicts the heights in inches of players on a professional basketball team. What would happen to the standard deviation of the data set if the lowest and highest heights were removed? Okay. Uh, let's see, 84, and this is 72. So the standard deviation. Hmm. Well, it, the sta calculating standard deviation. This is weird because usually I don't. I haven't seen a lot of questions about standard deviation on the SAT. But standard deviation kind of tells you how the data is spread out. So in this case, if we remove the highest and the lowest without doing a calculation, hmm, I'm not too certain about this. Uh, it would, let's see. I'm going to say, I mean, my instinct is to say it would remain the same. It's either this or it, there's not enough information. Because it shouldn't affect the spread. But then again, depending on how high that the highest and the lowest value are, I mean, in this case, they're in, in this position, right? 84 and 72, we know where they are. But then again, it's not a, sta it's not a, uh, oh, okay, wait a minute. So if this were a perfectly normal distribution, then it wouldn't affect anything, but it's not. We've got more values over here than over here. So if we remove the highest and the lowest, the standard deviation is going to be, oh, also it's going to be more tightly packed. So standard deviation might decrease. Okay, let's say, let's let's go with decrease. Uh, let's see what happens. I will read the explanation. I'm not totally sure. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, and let's just read their explanation. Standard deviation is the amount of variation. So removing the lowest would make it less spread out. Okay, good. So I reasoned through at the end. Okay, next. Uh, a farmer recorded the total fresh yield in kilograms of several varieties of onion crops. The table at the left gives the results. If the farmer tried, okay. Let's see here. Crop yield. So he has different things. And from the onions, different yields. With the 57,930 yield, how would it affect the median and the mean? Okay. So let's arrange these from smallest to greatest. First of all, 42,530, 4, 6, 4, 100, 5, 3, 130, 75,000, 75, 930. And then, so like, here's one, two. So currently the median is right here. And if we get this value above the median, so the median is going to go up. So this is out. This is out. 
So b it's between A and D. And will the mean go up? Well, we'd have to actually know what the original mean was. We can use a calculator really quickly. If it's higher than the original mean, the mean will go up. So let's actually add it up fast. 46,400 plus 75,000 plus 75,930 plus 53130 um, plus 42530 equals divided by 5 equals. So the mean will go down because this is smaller than the mean. There we go. Last question. Last surveyors visited a small fishing village and divided oops, and divided the land into plots, each 120 square meters in area. They counted the number of dwellings on each plot and recorded the data in the bar graph to the left. All right. And into plots. OK. Number of dwellings on plot. Got it. Zero, one, two, three. Do the people moving away from the village, some residents are now combining dwellings together in order to create larger ones. If this is the only change being made to the data, then which of the following must be true when the land is surveyed again? Okay, wow. So so some of these guys are in where there's like two dwellings are now combining them to be one dwelling. So like this could shift down to two. So we're skewing the data more to the left. The mean number of dwellings. So no, the mean number of dwellings will not increase. The mean, no, basically everything, it's, it's decrease. So the, it, these increases, the range is not going to increase, it's going to decrease. The variance is going to decrease. The median, so now the question is, will it be the median or the mean? So, okay. I'll combine I want to create larger ones. So the question is, I, I, I feel like they're going to both decrease, but let me think about it a little bit more. So if we have less twos and threes, the mean's definitely going down. The only question is the median. Yeah, it's possible that the median could, could stay the same. The median definitely decreases. The median could stay the same because right now the median c could be one. Actually, the median probably is one. And even if we shift more from like three to two, right? That mean that median could still stay at one, so it's the mean that's definitely going to go down. Okay. All right, that is it for the weekly live stream. Thank you guys so much. If this was helpful to you, please click the like button. And if you want to see more from Scalar Learning every week on the SAT, click the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and have an awesome rest of your day. Take it easy.